And welcome back everybody to the first Strike North America Closed Qualifiers presented to you by Nerd Street Gamers. We brought you some Group B action earlier in Complexity versus T1, where Complexity came away with that first big upset of the close to qualifier with that 2-0 victory. But now this is truly crunch time and this is where things get a bit interesting. Joining me in this lower bracket game between T1 and Equinox is Esports Dark and Simo. Now, guys, there is something finally on the line now because whoever loses now in this game won't get a second chance. There's not another bracket underneath this lower bracket. That is it. If they're out, they're out. They're going to have to fight through that open qualifier next week if they want to make it to the main event in December. So, Doug, how much pressure are these teams under right now? Yintu, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. My heart's already busting out of my chest and there was no <laughs> elimination on the line. I can't imagine what it's like for these players. I think the one silver lining, if you will, is that there's room three weeks from now to take another crack at this bad boy, to do it again. But you don't want to leave it up to that, right? Like if you can get out of here now, freaking hey, do it. And, and, and don't leave anything to chance. So for a lot of these teams, while there is another opportunity further down the road, I don't think anybody is approaching it that way. Get in, do it now, and not have to worry about doing this again. Mm, well, Simo, you know, both of these teams are lost today in that sort of upper bracket, I guess, semi-final. Um, so they're kind of in in the same boat in terms of momentum. But who is uh, where's your money on? Who do you think will come out on top in this matchup? I really want to mm. say uh, Equinox, but I think my brain is telling me T1. I think T1 should have the, the, the manpower to take down Equinox. We saw how scary they were when they just play patient and they just wait for the opposition to... Uh, you know, It's a very reactive play style, mind you. And while there are a couple of proactive moments there from T1, for the most part, they're willing to just play it slow, slow down the pace of the match, um, and act accordingly. Equinox, we saw just on split how quickly they want to play as well. So I think T1 are going to be no stranger the complexity style of things but for the most part if t1 lose here like think about what that means for the organization think about what that means for this team you had a chance like doug said to qualify here and now and you lost to a team that is that is struggling to make it into the top 10 conversation and i say struggling because, because there's a lot of great contenders for that spot to be a top 10 team i keep referring to that because only eight teams are moving on to the big the big shebang the big 100k prize pool tournament so there's only space for eight out of those top 10 and, and, and T1 wants has to be a part of that conversation. They're a prestigious org. They've signed prestigious players. They were the first team to sign a professional Valorant player. And so for them, there's a lot to lose. And for Equinox, there is everything to win. But I think my mind is telling me that T1 should have this one. Mm. Are you backing T1 as well, Doug? Yeah, I, I think so. And I think it would be a really cool story. Like a, a, Everyone loves an underdog, right? I'm a sucker for a good underdog story. But T1... As I mentioned when we first casted them, there were a lot of things that they showed that I was very impressed with. And they ultimately, they were, weren't able to walk away victorious. But there's some really fundamentally good stuff that T1 does, which has to lead, it, which causes me to lean that way at the end of the day. Mm. Of course, there were a lot of bad stuff, right? And that's why they're in this position. So what do you guys think they need to eliminate from that complexity complexity series if they want to make sure they're not the ones that are kind of packing their bags and going home tonight? Well, for one thing, they've eliminated probably the most important factor for Equinox, and that is banning Haven. That is, the, that is like the most important thing that T1 could ask for. And if they didn't get that first seed... Well, then Equinox is banning, um, you know, Ascent or something like that or something that T1 are comfortable on. Uh, and they're going to be put in a position where they're like, yeah, I I, I don't want to do that. As we see now, the, the map pick and ban is coming up before us. Haven off the table. We're going to Ascent pick by Equinox. I just saw some tweets from the Gen.G members that they're like, wow, Equinox is surprisingly good on Ascent. That's the map that went to overtime. That's the map that Equinox were able to swing back. And that is also the map that T1 are the most comfortable on. So this first map is so important. It's so important for both these two teams. Yeah, but but it's... Uh, yes, they're most comfortable on it, but they just took their first loss, right? Like, mm. how do you... You know, we know we're really damn good on Ascent, but we just got punched in the mouth on it. Like, oh, it, man. It punched in the mouth may have been a bit strong because it was a close match, but 
they did just drop something on this map. I mean, if we take that a bit a step further, would you not say that the fashion that they lost on this map, the fashion, uh, the team they also lost the complexity, um, is putting them slightly on the back foot because Equinox had no business beating Genji. They had no business even taking a map off of Genji. And the fact that they stay so competitive, and like you said, they have everything to win, uh, maybe it's going to give them a bit of a mental edge going into this one, don't you think? Uh, I, I just hope they don't get too down on themselves. I saw some of the tweets from the players as well. I know that it's it's difficult to gauge factual information off of tweets themselves. Um, <laughs> but for for some of the Equinox players, they're a little critical of some of the mistakes that they made against Gen G. And now it all boils down to this. You're either going to make mistakes or you're going to win against one of the most prestigious organizations in esports history. You have those two options, right? And for Equinox, I'd imagine considering how well the players played as a cohesive unit, especially up against Gen G on split. They still were able to bring that fight. If they still have any more left in the tank, anything, now is the time to use it to at least knock out T1 and continue to move forward and deal with the maps as they come. Because that's it. This is the last best of three of the night. If you can push through here, you can address those mistakes throughout the tournament, review whatever you want to do before the night's over. You just have to put it all on the line right here, right now, um, in order to win. Mm. Well, for those people who have sort of only been watching the B stream today and maybe uh, didn't quite catch uh, too many games by Equinox, which players or a player would you guys say that they should be keeping their eye on? Mm. Oh, baby, mm. it's Pancakes. Ooh. Pancakes delivers <laughs> time and time again. And I think another guy uh, to keep an eye on for, an eye out for, an eye on, an eye on for, Mina. Mina has, like, we have, sing we have seen mean to do absolutely filthy things so those are the two folks that i'm keeping an eye on on the equinox side hmm. what about you Seema? would you agree I, I would agree i think i want to keep an eye on d cop as well he was a, a top performer on, on that split map of course yeah it didn't really bode well for him but i think d cop's a great addition especially providing the omen or the breach uh and and just providing support for the team and also somehow finding success with it as well so that support is super crucial in taking down t1 well, now it's time for the fun part, or in our case, the bit that's going to make us sweat a little bit uh, to see <laughs> who is going to be the one that falls first. Now, it is the first map. We are ready. It is T1. It is Equinox. Only one of them can stay in this close qualifier by the end of tonight. Guys, take us away. Oh, thank you, Yinsu. Simo, we had a gift in Genji Equinox, and while that was a blast, there is also yes. the privilege of getting to watch a little bit of Equinox and how they like to play the map. What did Was there anything that stood out to you? Anything that really impressed upon you from that map? I, I, I really think that there are a couple of teams that are obsessed with attack. Like, they couldn't care less about the defensive side. In fact, if it was 24 rounds of attacking, there are several teams that would choose that over having... 12 rounds of defense and 12 <laughs> rounds of the attack. And Equinox, I feel like it's one of those teams' defense hasn't really been one of their stronger suits. Um, and, and they're a little bit more comfortable on the attack, executing macro plays, pulling teams around the map, um, and executing fast to really catch teams a little unprepared, a little unaware. I expect some of that similar uh, activity to happen on the map ahead of us. Ascent, the first one. Um, and I think according to what I see over here, uh, T1 is starting off on defense for the first two maps in a row. So Equinox mm -hmm. get exactly what they would prefer. They do end up going on defense on split, and that's going to give them a, at least a, a little bit of a start um, to, to that defensive side on split. But to, to start off on Ascent on the attacking side and the side that really catches a lot of teams a little unprepared or a little unaware of what's going to happen, the, the key test of time here for T1 is how are they going to answer some of those big, fast side hits? Uh, and if they can, is it in Brax? Is it in Spider? Is it in Days holding down the line? Who is it that's going to do the dirty work to stop Equinox from executing on their game plan? Well, and I think the good thing for them is they saw a lot of hot and heavy out of complexity, right? Like they, they've they recently dealt with this. So while they weren't able to fend things off the first time they dealt with this, this pace of play, y you've got to have taken something away. Right, especially knowing that Equinox likes to play at a similar pace. So, Simo, I think I think you're absolutely right. And the thing, at least for me, that I want to keep an eye on for T1 is what's the what's the mental grit 
like for this roster, knowing the expectations, knowing the pedigree of the organization, knowing the fact that people have often talked about the fact that this this roster and all the iterations of it have quite frankly underperformed and have not lived up to the expectations. What's your mental game like? And then add the fact that you just dropped a map on ascent. You're facing elimination. What? How? how yeah. How much? I, I'm trying to think of a better word for it, but I just keep coming back to grit. I think ultimately that's what they need to show me here. Yeah, uh, I think everyone in, in in the chat can agree that T1 losing this would be um, just, just a little embarrassing. As an organization, you put this roster together, you drop two players in food and crashies, um, and you say, hey, we're better off without them. Daze and Spider are going to fill in those shoes. We're going to rearrange the roles a little bit. Then we're going to move on and we're going to crush it. Well, you can't do a lot of crushing from the loser's bracket, especially if you get kicked out of the loser's bracket. And it'll be down to Gen G, Complexity, and Equinox left in, 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 this, in this group. And that is not something that you really anticipate for this group. T1 down here, down to the dumps. If they can't beat Equinox, what other 16 teams, or 15 teams rather, or 14 with, with the exception of T1 and Equinox, who else can they beat? If they can't beat Equinox here and now, then they're not going to beat any other team in any other group, right? This is going to be... Uh, their first test was Complexity. Their second test now is Equinox. If they can't pass this test, then they really have to strategize or re-strategize, rather, for 2021. Because First Strike, that's this is the biggest splash. This is the biggest tournament that we've ever had. Well, they will have the UMG qualifiers, but I think you're right. At this point... If there if there is a moment for this roster to shut shut up all the haters, all everyone who doubt has doubted them time and time again, this is it. It's up against Equinox. It's fighting for tournament life, and it's on ascent. Prove that the drop on ascent against Complexity was a fluke. Like you've got to communicate that to everyone. I I I expect T1 needs to stand strong here. On the flip side, as we've already identified, Equinox has everything to gain. The prestige of beating a Tier 1 organization, the clout that comes with uh, beating some of the players on this roster like Brax and Skadoodle, legendary players in their own right. And you get to say that you're moving on, that you're still in the tournament. It all boils down to this. And it's crucial that both teams move forward but as i obviously identified t1 have more to lose as an organization we're going to be looking at the attack setup here for equinox quite the heavy stack towards the a site a little bit of a pause but we at least we can identify what are the lane assignments in terms of agent selection yeah that'll be interesting to keep an eye on i, I think Part of me is just really sad that as soon as we were going to get <laughs> into the action, there was a delay. Um, it looks like it may have been a tech delay. I'm getting confirmation from the ho from the folks behind the scenes, which I want to take a quick moment to thank everybody behind the scenes who makes this possible. Guys, there's an army back there of observers, of producers, of tech support, of admins, of everything you could possibly think of all of these fine pieces that are coming together to deliver this this qualifier for us and they're often unfortunately underappreciated and unsung heroes so huge thanks to everyone behind the scenes we'll get back into the action as soon as we possibly can but yes as we mentioned earlier on as we teed it up it's a best of three and it's fighting for tournament life first round officially underway Agents are pretty much mirrored, and Skadoodle's going to start off with a very aggressive look towards a main. Mina is going to dispatch of him accordingly and start off with a four against three, four against two in favor of Equinox. Skadoodle gets maybe a little too overzealous and will pay the price. Now it's down to the 4v2, and they're going to rush onto this A side to get the spike down. Unless oh, Daze does things. Daze. Unless, yeah. All right, he was able to get two and, and, and even things up, which is probably the most important part there, right? Like, the fact that he was able to not up the numbers and put things 
Could be the difference maker here. Oh, Decop knows. He flashes in. He goes aggressive. And Brax is taken out. It's going to be one member left on the side of T1. And it was Daze. Daze was the hero at the beginning of the round. Now, severely outnumbered, as he was last time. But this time with much low, lower health. Shark Dart's going to affect Decop as EXN is going to play close underneath. Bobbin and Weaven out to safety. Decop is going to play point as the sacrificial lamp. But as Daze jump down, J Daze jumps down. There's too many angles to check. Too many nooks and crannies to look on the A site. A great start here for Equinox. If this is a uh, an opportunity to take down T1, it's going to be this one. Equinox, they pick a scent, the map that they want, and T1 have selected Bind. But we'll see, of course, if Equinox can win their map pick. Or if it's going to boil down to Ready. tournament life for T1 on Bind. A lot of question marks, and so far it's been off to a very hot start for Equinox. I have the spike. T1 playing a little bit more aggressively than we're used to seeing them. A lot more control towards that left side. Oh, and I like that, right? Like when you win the pistol, you don't expect something like that. So it's all about trying to catch them off guard, and that's exactly what happens. Rax goes aggressive with the frenzy. He's able to get one as fire ensues on the entrance of the a site pancakes and swinging just around the corner he's got that bulldog as well and that bad boy bites spike planted the door will fall shock darts timed identically as dazed takes out the ponytail underneath mina's feet down to the 4v2 equinox in a very hurt position it all was off the back of Braxis Heroics and Nuisance, ending. and unfortunately, Pancakes is going to feel the Nuisance of ACK. It's all down to DXN. T1 find themselves the round of victory. I can't recall if they had forced up. It does look like they will find some new weapons, something in store, them sitting on the ground. And that's definitely got to hurt for Equinox. Think about the repercussions. They bought up, they lost it all, and T1's going to take it after spending nothing. That is a painful situation to be in if you're Equinox. Well, yeah, and I think that's it. not just around when and the financial implications and, you know, all of that stuff, but I think there's significant intangible impact as well. The, the, the confidence boosting that T1 probably just picked up after not buying anything and winning a thrifty round, like stealing it away from Equinox, I, I think is huge. Now for T1, how do you continue off of that, right? Like, how do you continue to balloon off of that You've got to get into a comfortable spot on your map, on your sweet spot. Blade Storm may be the saving oh, grace oh, that they need. And as you go in, that two players caught unaware. Unfortunately, Mina cannot convert onto that second and D1. Just pinching Equinox from all sides. I'm a little bit afraid of what's to come in the halves. Halves and rounds to come because T1 just they're just off to a, a like an insane start. Like this is not uh, this is not the Equinox that we saw uh, up against Genji. Well, and the thing too, Simo, is that Mina Mina had a chance on another one. Let's take a quick look at that. Thank you to our friends over at GoPuff. Mina goes in, gets behind AZK, and had a chance. Three, four, five blades missed, and the the drone certainly didn't help things. But again. He had a chance that round could have gone, <clears throat> excuse me, could have gone the other way. But T1 holding strong, they had the guns advantage, and they were able to take that away from them. Now, Equinox is going to have guns in kind. They're going to be able to respond with firepower of their own. Let's see how they hold up. They're at least comfortable on they the site. There is a point man that has gone uncontested. It's Brax playing close in the workshop and pancakes planted. knows that there's somebody on the opposite side and i don't think brax knows where he is brax has already been a problem taking down two members bringing it down to just two the 4v2 pancakes in a position that i don't think t1 are aware of and as a result he's going to dispatch Black one paranoia landing. comes through trying to find more success now looking at mina's perspective it's all down to mina 46 hp recon bolt not going to spot him out so they know he's playing back side they're going to smoke him up smoke him off Shock Darts trying to play the corners. Spider pushes forward. 3k on the round. T1 finds success and now lead by two. Yeah, a comfortable, a comfortable strong start 
there for T1. And again, for them to have a good start on this map was of the utmost importance up against Equinox fighting for tournament life. So for them to be able to do that, I think that bodes really well if you're a fan of T1. And then also when you've got Days lighting up the scoreboard the way that he already has, it certainly is a huge vote of confidence. It looked like Skadoodle was thinking about bringing the operator and then opted, no pun intended, against it. Uh, as he's going to save some of that money and bring a Vandal instead. I'm just a little worried. Um, T1 have been looking quite convincing in their rounds up against Equinox. A little bit more convincing than their match against Complexity. And as we identify, this is do or die for both teams. Maybe that lit a fire underneath T1. Likely, no team didn't, didn't, wants to be in the loser's bracket. I don't think T1 wanted to be there either. And here they are. Defense set up. Utility towards the A side in terms of what Brax has cooking up. The rest of the team playing point on the B side. A little bit more passive play. This is going to give this fast hit for Equinox, who are really lacking in weaponry. Should be able to get at least get that spike down. Yeah, they're going to funnel in. A little bit of crossfire to try to tag up a few members, and QFAPL going down there certainly doesn't help. But they should, and they have. But the problem was the spike dropped. The spike dropped and never made it onto the site. Now it's been picked up. And it, yeah, as you said, it's likely going to go down. But T1 should be able to fight this back and take the site back without any problem. Still not going to be a flawless one, though. Pancakes. As a chair waiting is Skadoodle for him to peek out. Now it's down to DXN. Playing close to the Sheriff, starting to rush forward as T1 is also rushing forward, but a pretty standard round from them. Spike will still go down. That's credits in the pockets of Equinox. But things really start need to start to uh to heat up here for Equinox. Or else things are not gonna be looking so good any longer. It was on the, uh, the attacking side up against Gen G, where Equinox was able to finish with an 8-4 scoreline that is four rounds above Gen G. And then on the defensive side, it was Gen G that was able to, or sorry, on, on Gen G's attack, they were also able to finish 8-4, which ultimately brought it into overtime. For Equinox, they don't want to go back to that. They don't want to go to overtime, but they need to start having a little bit more of a convincing half is the attack that they're a lot more comfortable with, especially from what we've seen against Gen G. Well, and the problem is, it's not just the map, right? Like, this is T1's uh, preferred side as well at a 73% right win rate. That's staggering when you think about the teams that they've had to go up against and, and the road that they've taken to get here. So, T1, complexity notwithstanding, showing that they're good here, but are they going to be good enough? As it looks like Mina dashes in oh, wow. behind the Rolling Thunder. Going to get flashed up and has to back up, but Mina makes it onto the back line anyway. Days is taken out, and he has established full heaven control. Wow, that was a great play there from Equinox, splitting off straight through the tree room, getting control of the garden, and not wasting any time at all. Cute fat boy in this position really gives a lot of space for Equinox to play this gun round. Boils down to an injured Skadoodle who's trying to run away. Shot from Cute Fat Boy, not going to work out. Skadoodle now in the retreat. Oh, just barely sees the one, but he's going to use everything. All the smokes, all the tailwinds. Going to find another one for the road. Skadoodle now looking towards Cute Fat Boy. Shot's not going to connect, but does injure him. And Pancakes will come in from behind to save the day. Equinox answered back a round that they needed to in order to find resemblance of any success in this first half. Yeah, that easily could have gotten out of control had they not pocketed that one. So it was a big one, an important one for Knox, not just for the financial implications, but also really just to put another round up on the board and get that proverbial monkey off their back. Skadoodle and the rest of T1 are still going to have plenty of money to work with. They're going to be able to buy up what they want. Actually, Skadoodle's the, the one exception. Uh, and it looks like he's going to be bringing in just a classic, but he's going to have the no blades from as well. That, that always spicy uh, ultimate. Yep. One there it is. Yeah, once again, Pancakes is down a top performer for Equinox, and 
course, this is an important round for Equinox. Guns in hand. Looking to carry those into the next. And T1 already able to take out a member with Bladestorm still in hand here for Skadoodle. Got three knives left. And Equinox. Three members strong towards the A main side with a member Q Fatboy pushing up the catwalk. You want to just very happy to play angles here. Let Equinox push into them. Well, and remember, we saw this up against Complexity, right? Like, they're so comfortable with just sitting back and waiting. And now we're seeing a lot of that. It forces teams to play aggressively. Complexity had no problem with it, but Equinox hasn't had as much success. You hear the Rolling Thunder has been used to pave the way. Cute fat boy with the sucker punch. Onto Skadoodle's going to get that kill. The spike is actually going to rotate 30 away. Seconds left. It was a bunch of ruckus, riffraff, that was caused over on A, but the spike is making its way over to B. I know that some in chat may be like, well, duh, of course T1 are going to stay back. It's the defense. They're going to wait for the attack to push in. I get that. Last I totally understand that. But sometimes you'll see some aggressive peaks, maybe, you left. know, a fight for the orb. Something a little bit more aggressive. Well, T1 has been doing that consistently towards the A main side. Other than that, they leave mid wide open. Wide open for the attack oh. if they want to push that way. Oh, that oh, was nice. Nice job there from Spider takes down Q Fat Boy. But normally you'll see a team on Ascent at least contest for the middle. Yeah. You know, not play completely passive, but T1 are, are very happy to play retake on the B site. Let the attack have more control of the middle. And I, I'm a little bit more surprised as to you know, if you if you do a little bit more review of the team, I guess this round T1 playing a little bit more heavy towards the B site. But I feel like the middle can be a highly exploited from T1. They don't give it any attention at all, and you can have complete control of the middle. Whereas Equinox are just comfortable with pushing through the choke points, whether it's the A side or this B main side, which is what they're doing now. Which is the leading charge here for Mina. And Skaduda will take them down. AZK will help as well. It's one after the other. They'll fall apart. Pancakes will stop the bleeding, but for how long? It's a 4v2 with the spike still not on the ground. Yeah, and I think the important thing, too, is that he got away with his life. It wasn't just getting that opening pick. It was dashing away, around from the danger, away from the damage. But Skadoodle man. keeps that up and stays healthy. Pancakes, the last one alive in a 1v4 situation. Trying to rotate, maybe try to hold a tight angle. There's still plenty of time in this round, and Simo, if there's anybody on the side of Equinox who could pull off something like this, it would be Pancakes. It would be, but it's not going to be, <laughs> as Dazed will take him down. You know, funneling all of your resources in through B main works sometimes. It doesn't work other times. It also obviously depends on right how you smoke, where you smoke. Uh, but that first shot there from Skadoodle and the fact that he managed to escape really hurts Equinox because that op is still in play. Right. And Skadoodle is sitting pretty at 8,000. That's it. That's he's he's just at uh, at the end there, and he's probably gonna buy for somebody in the next round if he manages to survive. But he's got a lot of credits to work with, and I think the more comfortable T1 are, as you can see here, Skadoodle's getting more and more aggressive. We saw Skadoodle really start to heat up against Complexity, like near the end of map two. There was still a map and a half where he was not playing very aggressively, but now we're seeing a, a little bit of a different look, and that might just be the comfort. T1 up against the Equinox here, maybe feeling that they can take this one and move on. Yeah, you saw members of T1 begin to rotate over a little bit early as Equinox funnels onto the site. They've made it onto there, but Mina's being flashed up and can't see a dang thing. That's two in a row now as members of T1 have arrived. The cavalry is here. The reinforcements oh, are there, and no. Brax does it again. He's able to get two pancakes traded out. However, as the fight for the site continues, T1 has the numbers advantage. Equinox does not have the spike down. Heck, it's not even in a playable spot right now. Now it's going to go down. T1 is going to have to fight for the retake. Yeah, and I think they're happy with that. There's nothing really wrong when Daze just continues to spray every single penetrable surface on the site, making it very difficult for Equinox to hide anywhere. No one's going to go in towards hell, but I guess once Daze finally stops, it might be an opportunity. But as the shot's missed by Skadoodle, Daze Decay, that'll take him down. Whoa, what a transfer there from Pancake. Still using the smoke to survive, but power of the spray is too strong. You spray and you pray, and Spider and Daze did exactly that time and time again up there on that heaven side. T1 now lead. 
I-5. This defensive side is proving to be a huge problem for Equinox. Simo, I feel like Pancakes is, is perpetually one moment away from just breaking the internet. Right? From like absolutely destroying Reddit. And it's always like a 1vx situation and he gets two and we all of a sudden everyone just like holds their breath and scoots forward to the edge of their seats. Or, well, we're standing. So that doesn't really work for us. But Pancakes just constantly. I mean, look at that. That transfer is out of control. Yeah. He, uh, he's definitely packing a punch here for, for Equinox. But unfortunately, that punch doesn't feel like it's enough. The entirety of T1 have woken up. You've poked the bear, losing to complexity. As you said, to them, it feels like a mistake. You know, they want to answer back, and they want to answer back strong. And so far, the showing has been very confident. Braxton Company just one after another. Eco or gun round. It is just... It's a Game of Thrones episode. Like, Season 3, Episode 2, at, at, the, at the, the giant hall... Where everyone eats and, and then die. this is this is what it feels like. This is what uh, this is what I'm looking at right now. You should know that for any Game of Thrones reference, I can't help you, right? Like you I go know. in there, you go in there by yourself. I know I this know. is probably like criminal, but I haven't watched it. I started reading the book. This goes and here. I just I, I didn't finish it, but just know from this point yes. moving forward, you go you go Game of Thrones, you're on your own, chief. Oh, this is a nice spot. Well, unfortunately. Well, sorry, rather, fortunately for Equinox, they are not alone. They've got five members uh, that they can use to win a game of Valorant. And they're looking to win this one. They pick a scent. You won't get side selection. And boy, is it working for them. There's a possibility here that we see a 10-2. Equinox are likely going to be the deciding factor of that. But now as they start to push in, Spider is still alive. Somehow, some way, he's just pulling back further and further and further. And T1 are like, yeah. We're happy with that. Skadoodle no playing way. up above. Shot's going to be good. Tailwind to safety. No Skadoodle. Are you kidding me? Spike planted. Spike planted. 5v4. T1 up above. Now they're going to bring the rain. It's still a 5v4. Skadoodle. Nowhere to run. Just over the edge. You see the Hunter Fury is going to push things away. And Skadoodle's pinging. He knows exactly where he is. Skadoodle's going to get tagged up by the final Hunter Fury shot as the Roman Thunder tries to wreak havoc on the side as T1 pull knocks apart. My gosh, it's all the time. They do it again and again. They're so freaking good on this map. Yeah, this is uh, this is looking. T, you, you scared. You, you you poke the bear, okay? You poke the bear. You don't do that. You, you don't do that. Last T1 round, are furious after that matchup against Complexity and are really bringing the fire to Equinox. There's also a possibility that, you know, for for Equinox, playing a second best of three, you could feel drained, stamina. That goes there. You know, you could feel a little a little burnt out from the match against Gen G. You put your effort into it. You went to that overtime. You won, this and then you were there. hoping to do some damage on split, but you didn't. Lost 13-9, which is still admirable, but not, you know, as close as Ascent was. But yeah, here we are. And it's not close at all at the moment. He won on the precipice of a 10-2, and that's going to be very scary moving into the pistol. We're about to find out as this last round of the half is upon us. The spike has not committed either which way. We haven't seen a ton of, of, of mid-presence, and Simo, I believe it was you actually who called it out earlier, is that how that could potentially be something that could be exposed for teams playing up against T1, but naturally, the time that Equinox decides that they might try to establish some presence over there, they invest two members and they tag up Mina on the side of Equinox. I think they've they've taken that criticism to the chin like immediately, because I remember against against Complexity they really left that that middle wide open, but this time we're seeing a little bit of a different look. AZK and Skadoodle. Went on that B site working in tandem. We're seeing that live. This is down to a 5 e 2 I was about to say three. No, I didn't. Now I say one, as there's one player remaining. And jeez. You leave it up to Chef Ramsey Skadoodle slicing his dice in his way through some pancakes. Switching oh, that's, sides. That's one heck of a one heck of a reference. But moving on to the second <laughs> half. T1 lead by eight. 
We'll leave the food references till after the broadcast, but T1, man, are they looking good. Completely different team. Yeah, and this is the T1 that we expected, right? Like, this is yes. what we thought we were going to be getting when T1 first played Ascent up against Complexity, and Complexity were just too much to handle, and it was really the entire half. I, I mean, there were a couple of moments where Nox looked like, okay, yeah, maybe, but, I, I mean, T1, T1 all day. They just, they just pick Equinox apart. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, in that second round or third round, I said it's looking scary. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was just, once I saw how, how dominant T1 were playing and how convincing these rounds were starting to stack up, I mean, I was, I was willing to give it the benefit of the doubt, but I was like, nah, T1 are awake. They are, they're juiced up, they're ready to go. And when you've got Skadoodle, your company just walking onto a site free of charge, no service fee required. Uh, things are looking very scary for Equinox. But Brax, once again, in a, in a lurking play as we usually see him, he's got to dig his way out of this one. He will not dig. It's Equinox that'll dig him a grave. And now it's a 5v4 retake on this A site. Remember, folks, how, how insanely important the pistol rounds generally are. So much more when you go into a half. Down 10 2. T1 wins this. They likely win the next one as well. And then, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. They're at match point, so Equinox has to find a way to hold things off, but how do you when you've got Spider? One the addition to the squad, one the last one standing too. Oh my gosh, he's got three, not able to get the fourth. It's actually Decap who gets a 4K of his own and is gonna defuse the spike. We talked about how important it was for Equinox to win that round. Simo, they did it. Yeah, that was a close one. <laughs> that was very, very <laughs> close. Uh, I also have to point out um, that considering that first round was also won by Equinox. The pistol going to their favor. Um, it was after that that T1 really just ran away with that half. This is an opportunity for Equinox to show us that they're not so one-dimensional on Ascent. That their defense is just as good as their offense. Um, and considering they've been credited by Gen.G for having some crazy... Crazy attack plays. We didn't really see a whole lot of that in that first half. Now the second half... A chance that redemption for the audience and a chance for T1 to shut out Equinox from their own map pick. That round win for Equinox was important, but there's still a lot, a lot of work to do. T1, with the lead that they have, they don't have to force up here. They can, you know, just go into this thing with classics, and if they lose it, yeah, whatever, they still have a huge lead. To work with, but for Equinox, you really it, it has to be perfect Valorant from this point forward. They can't afford to make any mistakes. Well, so far they are making some mistakes as T1 have found some upgrades on the weaponry and they'll get that spike down on the A side. Still fighting for control of the tree room. Pancakes trying to break it down. That spike is not gonna go down as Equinox will stop it. It's all down to Spider. And unfortunately, the spider is going to get kicked to the dirt. Pancakes with 3K on the round. That was, a, that was a close one. That was a close one, as these rounds have generally not been for the first half. But that one was close. Now T1 can buy up their weapons and either A, return to their dominance, or B, Equinox are finally going to have a fighting chance that they've been waiting for after a difficult first half. All right. Can Equinox keep this up? They won the 50-50. They won the next round that they should have. But can they keep it up now? With four Bulldogs to work with, is it going to have enough bite? Do they have enough to continue Off to stick it to T1? There's the Rolling Thunder. Oh, man, that Rolling Thunder oh, so good. No, oh, but he gets flashed no. out. That, that no. it entirely nullifies that push. No, no, it's not that. It's not that. Mina tailwinds forward. And Pancakes is in his way. He's in his darn way. He was stuck behind Pancakes' omen cape. And he couldn't push forward with the tail when he was about to go forward and then up. Yeah, he gets flashed. But maybe actually Pancakes saves his life. <laughs> because he, he doesn't get into the view of the opposition. So right. ultimate gone, utility gone. And Equinox back to the drawing board. T1 going to re-strategize and maybe work their way up the middle. Which we've seen actually a whole lot of. Uh, working their way up through the uh, fruit market and then hitting the B site uh, with a two-pronged approach. But they're going to double back and maybe think about this A site a little bit more. 
Yeah, I think you're right. The best thing that probably could have happened to me you know, there was dashing uh, into the back. 30 of seconds Pancakes. left. Nonetheless, they stayed alive, but they invested plenty. And now T1 is actually going to be sticking right back to him as they go that way. Pancakes greets him with the freaking shotgun shell to the face and it looks like he's looking for more days gets tagged up a little bit and has to back off and wait the thing is t1 and the rest of it of the rest of the team have already made it onto the site left. the spike is gonna go down as skadoodle is there but keep a close eye on days folks he can cause serious problems if he continues to establish that area of the map yeah all he needs to do is hold down that angle equinox are gonna fight their way through both sides a couple through heaven Actually, none through the tree room, so Dazed's position is actually not going to be affected a lot as Equinox are very comfortable with just getting involved. So far, it's not been going the way they've returned down. Remember, they traded out, but they still need to drop down. ACK is not letting them drop down. Three of the rounds, down to the 1v1, but it's a 1v9 as Dazed will take him down and T1. One and two away, sorry, two away from closing out this first half. And Simo, who was it? Those freaking pancakes, man! Those pancakes again! 14 and 13, leading the frags for his team by head and shoulders. Pancakes is is that X factor that you just never know what's going to happen. You never know how he's going to deliver. And that time he dropped that round down to a 1v1 that really had no business getting that close. Gary Stites here for Ethan Knox once again. Guess who's coming in? It's Skadoodle. He's doing it as he pushes forward. Going to be looking for another one here with the Spectre. The Hunter's Fury is making it a problem. Oh my goodness. From range. And now it's down two final members for Equinox. Spike in the hands of Skadoodle. He needs to get to safety. The rest of the team playing point on different entryways towards this B site. And you blink and you miss it as Brax will, will take over the clutch duty. I know. Match I'll point. take it. I'll borrow it. Skadoodle for a round or two. Cleans up that round. Match point for T1. It's been a dominating match so far. Yes. And I'm worried it's about to end right here, right now. It certainly is possible. Ina's not going to have a rifle. Pancakes surely will buy something here, but it, it doesn't look... Uh, Great, there you go. The Bulldog in the hands of Pancakes. Cage trigger. T1 on the attacking side. Have shown they're, they're equally as good. Well, maybe not equally, but they're pretty freaking good on the attacking side as well. And Equinox just hasn't been able to handle any of T1. We are going to be going to buy next, which is, you know, seemingly T1's map pick. I'd imagine they would have picked the scent first, but... Equinox were hoping they'd be on max comfort moving into this one. It's it's really been all the T1 shows. Skadoodle and Brax, Skadoodle and Brax. Sometimes AZK, sometimes Spider. Really just a well-oiled machine that Equinox, their car won't start. Need some jump cables. You need to start that car battery back up. But for T1, yeah, they've woken up. You can see it here, <laughs> and uh, Equinox is feeling the wrath of the loss to complexity. You mentioned poking the bear earlier, and that really does feel like an appropriate way to describe things. Let's see if T1 can get onto the site and get the spike down and put Equinox away left. on their map. The Rolling Thunder lets Skadoodle in, and Skadoodle takes out d -top, one of the first members of defense. Equinox just down to two members left. T1 looking to put the finishing touches on a Mona Lisa performance. One on Ascent, remaining. Equinox just down to one. And not Attacker around for long. Remains. Who else but Brax to put Equinox away? A 2K. We, we talked about how that was what we expected. That was what we wanted out of, T, uh, out of T1, excuse me, on Ascent. Well, there you go. Yeah, that is, uh, that is the T1 that we came to watch, that we came to see today. I guess with their life on the line, they're willing to pull out all of the stops. And I'd imagine their coach, Fraud, uh, gave them a talking to, gave them a quick little pep talk. That's That 2 0 is, is unacceptable against complexity. We're not down and out yet. We're not leaving yet. We're about to 2 0 this one so that we can go stream and make some money, you know, or whatever, <laughs> whatever the case may be. The point being. Uh, that also did not look like the Equinox uh, uh, up against the Gen G series. A, a much closer yeah. matchup between Gen G and Equinox, and 
I think there's something there to be said about T1 really showing up and Equinox just out of steam. But we'll have to see that likely after this break. Ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, the second map, which will be Bind, we'll be right back after this.